And welcome to a battle-scarred and weary edition of Ben's Junk. And I say that because as of my shooting this video, this year's Halloween episode has not been released yet. And I spent just shy of a month on that thing, and uh, the music did not help. But I just wrapped production on that yesterday afternoon, again, as of my shooting this, and uh, it ain't exactly early as of my shooting this. So I am exhausted and I am nervous as to how it goes over, really nervous as hell. Uh, it, it could just be, you know, a fart and a hurricane. It could also be a huge moment in archive lore. It could be career suicide for me, who knows. So uh, consider this a bit of a time capsule video. But uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, today, I just wanted to get out. I, I spent so much time in the studio, so to speak, that I haven't really been able to enjoy the autumn this year. So I just wanted to get out, enjoy the nice autumn colors and the weather. And so I, I had to do something productive. So I spent this afternoon testing out this old three and a half inch floppy disk driven digital camera that I found at a thrift store over the summer. And I guess it is appropriate that I did this because it was this time last year and uh, I think as far as release dates go the same week, I became the probably final person on YouTube to try out the new Polaroid film. But uh, yeah, I had to do a little compare and contrast with the stuff from last year. So I went back to the same locations. I tried to take some of the same shots and you can easily pull up the Polaroid Ben's junk. So um, the results were what one would expect. So with the Polaroid, it was a little soft, a little washed out. And with this, it's kind of the early digital camera, harsh, compressed, pixelated, so. No surprises there. But anyway, let's let's get down to business here. So the camera used was this Sony Digital Mavica model MVC FD73. It's from 1999, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, 99. And uh, believe it or not, this is the oldest digital camera that I have ever used. To put things in perspective, my parents didn't buy their first one until, call it 2002, 2003, and that thing used those memory stick, gum stick deals, and I was still shooting Polaroids almost exclusively when I needed to do photo stuff, as late as, I guess, 07, and my first digital camera was actually my parents' one that they had bought when I was in high school. So uh, I guess it would have been about the time I started making Archive that I finally truly got my own digital camera. Not that I hadn't borrowed it uh, from my folks before that. But I digress. I'm good at that. So anyway, uh, as far as specs go, this thing isn't measured so much in megapixels as it is in dots. 84,260 dots, to be exact, uh, or 480p if you want to go down that road. But I have found that uh, there is an uncompressed setting on here, but it's not worth it. Uh, you will only get one or two shots per diskette. And so I had to use the other than that best settings, next to best. And from there, I would get, on average, 12 to 13 pictures per diskette. Now, there were anomalies along the way. One diskette, I think, got 16, and another, I think, only got 10. And my guess is that it had to do with how much was in the shot, how much, uh, I guess, data it would have to process. You know, is it a shot with a lot of dead space or is there a whole lot of stuff going on? So in my case, you know, autumn, a lot of leaves, a lot of texture, I probably wound up on the shorter end of things. But anyway, um, as I mentioned, this runs on diskettes and it just so happened that I had not only a box of diskettes sitting around, but uh, IBM formatted ones because that's what this takes. 
and uh, ones that are truly period appropriate. This box is from 1998. And uh, if you look in the corner there, go anywhere diskettes. So uh, I'm wondering if they didn't have digital cameras in mind with these. And uh, it touts how you can use it in any climate. Well, uh, I can say this much. I didn't put it to any major climate test, uh, but it was 45 degrees or so out this afternoon when I shot pictures. And as far as 20 odd year old diskettes go, things went quite well. So I shot 82 photos, grand total, if you count the test ones I took at home last night, and uh, over the span of seven diskettes. So I still have a few unused in here. And uh, 78 out of those 82 survived. Now, as for the four that got corrupted, I couldn't tell you if it was the diskette, the camera, a little of both. But I'm just going to try and keep things in perspective and say that that's a good batting average. Now, maybe you had one of these back in the old days and you can fill me in, is that good or bad? But it felt about right to me. I mean, I was genuinely worried about the disk drive in this thing. I mean, it's in really nice cosmetic condition, but at the same time, who knows how much use this got. So I don't think this ever got dropped or anything, but, you know, wear and tear still factors into something like that. As far as I'm concerned, we're still dealing analog, even though we're saying digital this, digital that. As far as I'm concerned, magnetic media, yeah, we can argue that all day. Uh, yeah, you can do digital on magnetic media. Anyway, I'm off track again. So I uh, had to make two minor investments with regards to this. So this did have the battery still in it and uh, well, not in it, but in the box and the battery, as it turned out, was completely dead. However, this uses the same batteries that my digital eight handy cam uses. So I just stole the one from the handy cam, tried it out here and lo and behold, it was fine. Now I did wind up investing in a used charger for one of those things, largely because I didn't want to be dependent on the camcorder for that. And also the, as of my shooting this, the value is bottoming out. So I got a used one in really nice condition, shipped and everything, taxed the whole ball of wax for under $10. Uh, I think the shipping was more than the actual unit. So, you know, good time to load up on that sort of stuff. Now, of course, a lot of old cameras and camcorders would keep the track of the date in time and do so using a coin battery. And of course, the one that was in here from the old days was dead. So, you know, that had to be replaced, but you know, no big deal. Those are still readily available. Anyway, let's take a cut here and we'll dig more into the camera proper. Well, it shouldn't come as any shock to say that this is very much a consumer level camera. And as such, the number of manual features is limited. Uh, for all intents and purposes, there are only two to choose from. And since I put the battery back in and stuck a diskette in there, I guess I might as well fire this back up. So... Here's the power button slash slider. So you press the button and slide down and you turn it off the same way. I'll take the lens cap off. So for all intents and purposes, our two manual settings are the zoom and exposure. Now this time around, stupid old Benny boy did not read the manual, at least not till after the fact. And I initially thought that the bright buttons at the tip of my thumb meant exposure, but it just meant the brightness on screen, not the pictures that you take. So it pays, I found, to keep the display on all the time. And so to do the exposure, it's the top two icons. And uh, we'll just, you have the arrow slash OK button here. So up, down, right, left. And then if you press the center, it'll actually 
select it. So we'll go back up a half step just to offset that. And otherwise, uh, I had another little failure with this, I, really just a brain fart. So when you take a picture, uh, I started to press the button and it beeped and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting for it to take a picture and it never happens. And then I press it down harder and then it takes a picture, but it also says recording on screen. So here I am thinking I've unlocked some sort of video feature. I mean, you wouldn't get much of one on here, you know, maybe a few seconds, but you know, that'd be kind of cool as a novelty, a little video on a diskette. But uh, no, there is no video feature on here, or if there is, I can't find it. I didn't see anything in the manual about it. So what's actually going on is when you press the button halfway, it'll beep, and that's to lock in the white balance and the focus levels, and then you finish pressing and it, you know, does the actual job. So uh, let's go ahead and just take a, a random stupid photo here. So halfway, it'll beep. And then I'll press it the rest of the way. And that's where Benny Boy got confused. So um, this thing is pretty intuitive. So let's go ahead and uh, just swap over to play mode. And, uh, oh, isn't that just a beautiful, beautiful shot? So, uh, we'll jump back to camera. You can delete photos, too. So, otherwise, everything you'd expect. You, you do have a flash option on here, so you can go full power, half power, or no flash at all. I wound up not needing it, so I didn't use it. Uh, cheesy picture effects, so uh, negative sepia, black and white, solarization, every cheesy thing from the period that you would expect. And if you cycle through the program settings, that's where you get alleged iris settings and all, but it just seems to play with the exposure more than anything. I didn't notice any improvement in depth or anything like that, so I just kept it off. So I'll cycle through one more time. So I, I thought it was, uh, I, I didn't see the point of it. Anyway, um, let's uh, talk uh, compression here briefly. So I mentioned earlier that you can take a completely uncompressed photo on this uh, in the bitmap format, but it means you'll only get one or two photos per diskette. And the quality, just because of what's going on in here, is it, the difference in quality is negligible as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I, I guess it's nice for somebody, but I, it doesn't really improve the resolution any. Um, yeah, that was kind of odd. And uh, as far as other toys go, this was kind of odd. You can copy floppy disks with it. So, uh, so much for don't copy that floppy. But the only thing I could think of using that feature for would be if, is if you're out in the field somewhere and for whatever you, reason you wanted a backup of whatever you just shot. Because otherwise, the I, I haven't tried it, but it seems like such a long convoluted process uh, in the manual that it's just like, you know, if you can go home and stick it into a computer or at the time a, a diskette-enabled uh, laptop or one with a one you could plug in, just put it on the hard drive of the computer and then uh, make your copy or do whatever you need to do. So, yeah, that's kind of something. Uh, otherwise... Uh, yeah, I, I've mentioned they had the consumer in mind with this. Uh, I found once I got past my own little bits of stupidity uh, it, that it's a pretty intuitive camera. It was only towards the end that I started to dig out the manual more, just looking for uh, Easter eggs, I guess you could say. And even then, nothing that I really found all that useful within that realm. So, uh, taken in context of the times for a consumer-grade digital camera, late 90s, early 2000s, it's perfectly fine. Passes the test beautifully. And so, uh, I'm just gonna leave it with that. 
So I'll uh, sign off on the vocal front here. I will leave you with a montage of the 78, uh, not all 78, but the best of the 78 pictures I took. Well, now 79, assuming it transfers. But uh, yeah, I think I'll skip that one. I'll talk to you again soon.